you want more of the conventional wisdom on sales and growing revenue, this podcast isn't for you. Throw away your closing tactics, tricks, and tips, and learn what the top 1% income earners do to create results. This is the On Purpose Growth Podcast. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another On Purpose Growth Podcast. My name is uh, Brian McDonald, and today I have the, uh, the fortunate to have uh, Steven Summers on. He's the, the co-founder and CEO of Marketplace Superheroes and uh, Marketplace Superheroes Freight. Uh, so, Stephen, you have a, a great background and, and, um, and whatnot, so I, I'll hop it over to you to give a little bit of introduction about yourself, and then uh, we'll dive right in. Sounds great, Brian. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here in my dad's spare room today. <laughs> I, just, I, I didn't forget about this call, but it was just one of those things, a lot of stuff going on with her. We have a bank holiday today, so here I am in a spare room having a chat almost back where I started. So anyway, <laughs> delighted to be here. I love sharing what I can on podcasts and a bit of background for everybody listening. As you mentioned, Marketplace Superheroes and Superhero Freight, they're two companies that I own, I co-own with my business partner, Robert Ricky. And I have been in the online space now for nine years. We st I started out not an entrepreneur, not entrepreneurially minded whatsoever. I got into personal development in my late teens, early 20s. Figured out I wanted to get into to build an online business, uh, even though I tried to make it in the music industry before that. It didn't work out. It was not to be a rock star, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so anyway, studied business for a couple of years in college. Didn't finish because I just felt like I wasn't learning the skills to, to build a company there. So uh, really fast forwarding, you know, early 20s, trying to figure out what business to be in. And I met Robert, my still business partner to this day. He was selling products on places like Amazon and eBay in the UK at the time. And so I basically worked with Robert for like a year as like an apprentice, learning all I could about that business. Then took all my business reading. I'd become a real avid business reader. Started apl applying all the different things I'd been learning about systems and strategy to that business. We ended up creating a, a brand new company where we sold our own products on Amazon uh, globally. And we built a multi-million dollar business doing that. And then from there, we started a company uh, nearly four, four years ago now, Marketplace Superheroes, where we teach people all over the world how to sell their own products on Amazon. Uh, that's now a multi-seven figure company, almost an eight figure business. Wow. Uh, we, own, we have a freight business. So we do all the freight for our members from China to the US, China to Europe. Um, we're just starting an accountancy firm doing uh, the, you know, their accounting and books as well for all our Amazon sellers. So yeah, uh, you know, built multiple companies, still building companies, still building businesses, consulting with a lot of online businesses now, helping them grow. And, you know, I love doing these podcasts because I get a chance to talk about some of the mindset stuff I've learned, some of the business lessons I've learned. And my goal always, Brian, is just to, for, for one person, if one person can take away something really actionable that they can implement immediately and see instant. And it is possible to see instant results in certain areas, especially on the mindset front. That's always my goal. And, and so I'm just looking forward to getting in and you know helping people as much as we can today. Yeah, awesome. I, I appreciate that introduction. And uh, there's a lot to talk about there. So, um, and, and, uh, and I want to say, I honor you for, for having that goal of being on podcast because um, really that is, is, is one person. If we impact one person with this. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So, um, yeah. thank you for bringing that up. And we'll do so, a lot more than that, but anyway, <laughs> so, good. so it's funny. You're, um, you're in the place where it all started, right? Yeah. <laughs> you had said, right? So, um, let, let's take people back and, and I know you give a, a very high, um, overview of your, your journey. But maybe give a, give a little bit more context to that. Maybe get, it, it probably wasn't all all um, sunshine and roses uh, along the way. So, because um, <laughs> what I want to really talk about towards the end here is, um, or or towards the the meat of this podcast is, you know, you went on this journey, you went through some adversity, and then um, you're in what I may call um, thriving mode. Right where you're, where where you're now, you're successful, and now how do you keep it going? And that's where I want to get this podcast to. But let's give people um, a background on the the journey and some adversity you've been through. 
Yeah, no problem. Well, well, lots of adversity, you know, like any entrepreneur. And uh, it's, and even now, you know, as we grow our companies, still facing a lot of challenges at this point because of this stuff that we're, we're taking on. So I'll definitely give a, 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 I'll jump through a lot of those things and explain a lot of those, those pieces. So I guess the first piece of adversity for me was, you know, not coming from an entrepreneur background as a family. Um, living in Ireland, you know, which is very, very small country. A lot of people in, in this country, like they, they don't have the belief system uh, that, that they can actually have their own business uh, for, for historical reasons and stuff like that. So here I am, you know, in my early 20s saying I want to quit my job as a data processor, super boring, <laughs> uh, on becoming an entrepreneur. And of course, everybody around me told me I was insane. And, uh, you know, you're never going to make it. We'll see you back here in six months. All those kinds of things, which is hilarious because we're told and led to believe that everybody around us, they're going to support us on this journey. But typically when you start to do something which is out of the ordinary, it's, you're, you're going your own path. You're actually starting to have other people. They start questioning themselves. They start questioning why they haven't changed. And they, and they start to project uh, against you. Mm. So, so that'll be one thing that for those of you listening, when you go to change your, your current situation, that's one thing that's going to happen. People will try to drag you down. And that happened to me. So here I was, I found this guy, Robert, who was in business. And I just said, I'm going to quit this job and go on this journey. And so when I started with Rob, you know, I had no business knowledge really other than what I'd learned in college, which wasn't very much. <laughs> Practically, uh, honestly, and I'm not ripping on colleges. You know, I, I've I've lectured for MBAs and stuff like that in some of the top business uh, schools in Europe here, and you know, they're not equipped for the world, the world of business, other than a high level corporate careers, which is just you know, it's just the way it is, and that's fine. So the point anyway is that I, I started working with Robert and hadn't a clue, and I thought to myself, hey, I'm moving into an internet business. I'm going to sell my own products on Amazon. This is going to be great because I'm going to get to just sit there all day, uh, watch TV, maybe, <laughs> uh, you know, all these things I thought would happen. And on my first day in the, in the warehouse at the time, you know, I had to lift boxes. Uh, I was cutting my hands on the straps that would go around cardboard boxes. I was on containers offloading products that, were, that we were bringing in. You know, I was digging out entire industrial estates with a shovel when it was snowing and i was just like man this is not the life laptop lifestyle <laughs> that i was told <laughs> is there you know so i started to learn like online businesses are real businesses and in order to become a real successful business owner one of the first things you got to do is you got to start treating an online business like a real business mm. so then that led me on the journey of well i'm learning with robert how can i start to make additional money there to, to raise money to start a company because at the time we weren't business partners so i started selling he had lots of products lying around the warehouse uh, that were secondhand uh, technically because they were returns or whatever and i thought maybe i can start to sell these products on amazon or on ebay and auctions and you know it solves a problem for this guy that's dead stock so i did that and started to learn a lot about copywriting you know how to write um a copy on the internet, words on the internet to make people want to buy things. Uh, for those, who, some people think copywriting is uh, legal stuff, but I'm sure this audience know, know better. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I started learning about copywriting sales, direct response marketing, things like that. And started to see how I could apply it to sell products online. And that began to help me sell more. I was selling a thing secondhand. I was getting some new products in locally and making money. And so at that point then I realized, wow, this actually, this works now. So that level one, then that belief system was instilled of like, well, I can make money and I've got to treat this like a real business. And so that was level one. Level two then was going from that to real company that pays my way and other people's way. So at the time, Rob, Robert was going through a lot of adversity in his own business because even though he'd been successful for a long time, he had two warehouses, he had about 10, between seven and 10 staff, a lot of stress. He was working 16 hours a day. I was working those 16 hours with him every day, mm -hmm. learning the whole time, seeing what was going on. And really we realized like we've got to start, we've got to change this whole business. And I read the book, which a lot of people have, E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, oh, yeah. talk about systems, creating more systems. Mm -hmm. So we began to do that. We systemized the process of finding products to sell on Amazon, branding them, etc. And we went on this journey of getting rid of everybody 
that was in the two warehouses. Wow. Getting, getting rid of one of the warehouses. And Rob and I literally worked together for, you know, a year, basically, all day, every day, uh, finding new products, bringing them in, packaging them up, sending them back out to Amazon, and turning things around. And at the time, you know, the, the, the company had a lot of debts and things like that I had to pay off. So we decided to join forces. We paid back all of the debt that Robert Rob's company owed due to, you know, uh, he had trouble with a business partner and stuff like that. He didn't want to let those 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 things go. So we worked together to get them out of the way, uh, which, you know, some people told me I was crazy because they're not, that's not your bill. But I was like, well, I'm learning how to grow a business here. We, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to help. I'm going to work with this guy. Let's, and we're going to do this together. Mm -hmm. So a lot of short, you know, it took us about 12 to 14 months. We turned that around and we had a, a new company with a lot of effort. It was doing seven figures in revenue, making a couple of hundred grand in good few hundred thousand in profit. And there was only two of us in the business. We had no staff, we had no expense, hardly any expenses. So it was a very profitable thing. And we, we began to run, run it like that for quite a while. And then really we got to a point where, you know, we just thought, this is fine. We're making money, but ultimately it's a little bit boring because we're not really impacting anybody. And that's when we decided to start Marketplace Superheroes. So that's a little bit of the early uh, adversity examples. I've got lots more, of course. Oh, I appreciate that. And, and here, the interesting thing that, that I'm listening to, um, and I want everybody that is listening to this to hear this, is that um, what you set out to originally do is not where you ended. Is that right? The, the picture in your mind, right? Talk about well, that. Oh, whoa, whoa, man, that's so true. You know, when I started, like, all I wanted to do was work from home. That was my only goal. Uh, get out of this job, work from home. Because I, I hated my job. I really did. It was just very boring. And some people laugh. Like, they're like, oh, you were in your early 20s and you're, you, you know, this job is boring you. And I was like, yeah, but I always wanted to be, I wanted to have that freedom. I wanted to have choices in my life. And, I, and even though other people are, have been in corporate careers a lot longer, I might look at my struggle as like, well, he was only a kid. What did he know? Which I understand. For me at the time, it was just a very suffocating thing. And I really wanted to prove that I could do a, this business thing. So that's number one. I, only, I wanted to work from home as my main goal. That's all I wanted to do. And the funny thing is, which is just another uh, point onto what you're saying there, when I worked from home, I got my wish. I didn't like it. it was yeah. boring. I realized I like working with people. And I totally changed, I totally changed things. So, so definitely where I started... In, in my Amazon journey is not where I ended up. And equally with Marketplace Superheroes, I remember sitting down with Robert mapping it out. And I said to him, you know, this is what we're going to do and all of that. And he just said, I said to him, what would be an amount of money that you would take now that you'd be happy making from this business in the lifetime of that business? Uh, and he was just like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, it'd be great to teach people and help them. And, you know, maybe 300,000 U.S., or whatever. And it's so funny that we look back now and like that, that's, we're way beyond that now. You yeah. know, we, we, <laughs> and to be honest, like, it's not just about money now as well. It's, it's totally changed because, you know, with our freight business at Marketplace Superheroes, literally the only way our freight business and that business can survive long term is that our clients are successful because if they're not successful, they're not going to ship anything. If they don't ship anything, then we can't succeed. So we've got this interesting situation where uh, we train our clients to be successful and we need them to be successful long term in order for us to have that, that valuable relationship with them. So yeah, completely different to where I started. Uh, and that's the uh, one thing I want to catch on here too, that, um, your it's funny you 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 created a a second business right the, between the 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 freight and the um the uh superhero marketplace education business yeah yeah that needs the first one to succeed and the only way the first one succeeds if you help other people succeed and that that says, that says something about being able to create a a client centric business that serves other people success begets success hundred percent. And not only that, you know, it, I, I do consult with online businesses now, you know, I, 
I help them. I, I, it's not something I do a lot of because I, you know, my time, I don't have a whole lot of time. It's something that we're moving into more and more now. Uh, more and more people want me to help them with, th with that. But the point entirely is that, yes, we are client centric. And really, like, our whole back end of our business was, was all formed because we saw problems our clients were having with freight. And we created a whole new way of doing freight based upon the needs of our clients. So for anybody listening, you know, if you never work with us, uh, learning how to sell on Amazon, that's totally fine. That's not why I'm here today. It, just even listening to the principles like what we're talking about, you should be looking at your own business. And I can guarantee you, no matter what business you're in, when you've got a customer base, you 100% have got two or three additional, maybe not full businesses, but certainly uh, offers, products, services, whatever you want to call them, that you could be adding in right now, that depending on the size of your client base, you could be adding in six or seven figures of profit to your business very quickly. And I mean, just to give you a quick example, I worked with a girl recently, Helena. She teaches people how to pass the project management exam in the US and Canada. Oh, and okay. you she has a, she's tons of clients, never sold anything else to them other than a project management course. And she's had thousands of students pass the exam with her help. But I said to her, put on a weekend intensive and just work with people for the weekend. Show them how to pass the exam on a weekend. And off she went. She only did it just recently. And she did like 20 grand in a weekend profit, you know. And that was great. Like, and I was like five emails, no product created, no nothing. And that's just, again, another example of she didn't realize she has more businesses within her business. So that's definitely something we've seen. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the, that's, that's phenomenal. So, so let's move into, and, and we're kind of touching on it here, is how you're thriving, right? Like, so you've arrived and you now are thriving. And let's talk more about that. Like, how, how are you thinking? What are you doing? Um, where do you see the future? Yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah, I think, first of all, it's interesting because when you get into a thriving mode, um, the reason you got there was because you created a foundation that mm. mathematically enables you to continue to thrive. In other words, in our business, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we have a bigger client list now. We have a bigger prospect list now. Uh, so our audience has increased. Therefore, it enables us to create more offers and more, more ways to serve our clients, which enables us then to, to obviously make more money and find it easier for us to add team members into the business and stuff like that. So I suppose the first thing is that getting the, the mathematics of your business working for you rather than against you. Like when you're starting, that's why it's so hard to get your business established and take so much effort and hustle because you have to build a client list. You have to build, uh, you know, trust with your audience. You have to build all those things. And we did that for two, three years of our business's life. Uh, and then of course there are, there are ways to, to, rapidly increase the speed of of the, that like partnerships, joint ventures, things like that, which we, we can get into if you want to, but point entirely is that's number one. Number two, then, you know, we add in a lot of team members. We have 25 people on our team now. There are contractors, team members all around the world. And that helps, that helps make things really easy because the things I don't like doing, I know can outsource those things. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like uh, doing the, the financial end of things, the bookkeeping. We, we don't do that anymore. It enables me then to focus on what I'm best at, which is connecting with our, with our audience, inspiring our audience, doing podcasts like this to increase, increase the reach and increase the, the, the reach of our message to, to the world. And so that's great. So being able to focus on your unique skill set, what you bring to your business, that's what you can do when you're in thriving mode. Uh, on from that then, we're, we, you know, we're in a situation where we're adding in more partners to the business, like you know, people that come in and teach new things. We're doing affiliate promotions for, for people who just, who don't buy our programs and it's not for them or whatever. That's great. We try to find them someone who they would like to work with. So, so that's kind of the, the thing it's offers and uh, your team and being able to focus on your zone of genius. They're all the things that I'm doing now on a personal level spending a lot of time with my health and fitness. You know, I've got a trainer now works with me. I go to, to the gym and I get trained because that's the other thing. You can start to understand that you need accountability in all, all areas of your life. So I pay for the, that accountability. That keeps me on track because if I'm not being coached, well, then I'm out of integrity with my own audience because I'm telling them, well, you wow. need help. You need mentorship. If I don't get that, well, I'm full of crap, like, you know, so I've got to keep an integrity. I got to keep, I keep challenging myself on that area. And then on from there, you know, just better practices of productivity and, and things like that. 
and then and then life is better because you know we don't have to worry month to month what's happening in our businesses we things are on the up you know things are great uh, we just had a kid recently which is you know another new cool experience oh, congrats <laughs> So yeah, that, that I, I don't know if that answers your question, but certainly that's the kind of stuff we're, we're looking at right now. Oh, uh, absolutely. Right. Um, so let's talk about this mindset because it's um, how are you thinking in regards to um, looking at your business? Because it sounds like it's, it's much more than just the business. I mean, you, you, you went into some personal stuff there. So what's your overall mindset now into thrive? Great question. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, a complex answer, right? Because there's a lot of different pieces to that. I suppose what I would say is that there are certain principles that I, I learned over the years that I really tried to focus on uh, as much as I possibly can. The, the first principle is that I, I, I just try to keep on taking 100% responsibility all the time for everything that's going on and all the things we're doing. Uh, even in our business, you know, many things have happened that have been adverse at times, right? You know, things not working out, deals going bad, whatever the case may be. Uh, our service levels at times not been good enough when we were building it up in our, in our freight business. They're great now. And I suppose... It's easy to blame other people for that or blame other circumstances, but we always look at what did I do to bring this on or what can I do? What can I do now that will, that will make things easier or irrelevant? Again, that's from the one thing, so the focusing question. That's number one, taking responsibility in all these different areas of my life. And even from a fitness standpoint, you know, outside of business, again, taking responsibility. Did I eat healthily today? Really? No, I didn't. And, and you can blame because I was busy or whatever. But the truth is, I just, I just didn't because I didn't take responsibility. And that comes down to another principle, which is, you know, 100% is a breeze, 99% is a bitch, as they say, right? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Because <laughs> yeah. it is like, I mean, if you're, all, if you're 100% in, there's no issue. Like, you know, it's not going to be the day I don't get up today because I'm 100% in. Right. Because if you're 100% in, it's, it's that that's the thing you know those little changes every day adverse changes they compound in, in a negative way so so that's there are a few things uh, on from that then you know really just try to focus on i don't like the word but it's the only word i can re think about that having that abundant mentality where there's more than enough money there's more than enough customers there's more than enough everything available to everybody in the world with over seven billion people I always try to have an abundant mentality. An example of that, re example of that recently was that uh, Helena lady I was telling you about mm -hmm. where I helped her get that result in her business. And, and I actually just, you know, I helped her because she was a friend. I got to know her at a mastermind. But also, you know, the other side of it was I wanted to put my methods into different businesses and show people, look, this stuff works. No, it doesn't matter what business you're in, etc. And so maybe you could say that's a selfish uh, motivation, but really what I actually did was she made a 20 K profit, which I've got, I've got documented and everything. And I didn't ask for any money. She was, she was like, why aren't you asking for anything from this? And I said, you know, I, I would rather you got that result and down the line using your, your testimonial, your success story. I know I'll get that back in time. So I don't need that now. So having that abundance of like, I don't need that. I, I can utilize that for other purposes that are going to help myself and other people, etc. That's something I try to have also from just marketplace superhero standpoint, constantly understanding there are billions of people we can serve. Uh, we'll never serve them all. So there's an endless stream of customers, etc. Uh, on from that principle wise, mindset wise, you know, going back to the basics all the time, that's yeah. something we don't do often enough, like breaking down a goal. So if you want to get to an error business, a lot of people want to make say 10 grand on the side. Well, that's a, that number for some people if they've never made that much money before in a month is kind of a scary number. But again, chunking that down, it's $300 a day. So then the question becomes, how can I make $300 a day? It's much easier than saying, how do I make 10 grand in a month, you know? Mm -hmm. And so even in our business as we grow, constantly looking at that idea of, you know, if I do, if we do a promotion or something and it makes us three grand, well, you might be like, that's a, that's a, that's a disappointing promotion or something. Someone might say, yeah. right. But, you know, well, if I did that every week, there's another 50, you know, 52 weeks in a year by three grand, 150 grand or whatever. 
yeah, that was just not there before. So I think my big point is when you look at the fundamentals and break numbers down, you realize even small numbers can compound when you give things time. So they're just some things I can think of off the top of my head, but I could talk to you for days about that. You know, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've already heard like four other podcasts we could do while we're, while we're sitting here and talking. And it's funny you bring up that, you know, um, the basics and actually being coached yourself because um, those things are very important. And, and I mean, even about an hour before we got on here, I got an email from one of my coaches and mentors that said, Hey Brian, next time we talk, we're going to look at your metrics and how you're doing. And like in my guts, like, ah, oh, gosh, here we go. But I know it's, it's good for me. Right. And, and it's okay. just the basics. That's it. You know, it's the life unexamined is not worth living. And as Jay Abraham would say, a business on it that's not examined is not worth running, you know? And yep. that's the truth. Like, so yeah. And, and sometimes it can hurt to look at those things, right? You know, especially with myself when I started, you know, looking at your bank balance when you knew you had a lot of bills and you didn't have a whole lot of money because you were not, you didn't understand all the things I understand now. It's not nice to look at those things sometimes. It's not nice to see where you're wasting money. But the truth is, that that comes back to taking responsibility again and understanding that, yeah, I'm not using my, my, my resources in the best way possible. And so let me take full responsibility of that. And I think as well, a big thing I always tell our clients and I'd like to share again today is we're not top resourcefulness near enough in the world. And there's a great free PDF online. I, ha I didn't write it. There's no opt-in required. If you just <laughs> Google um, J. Abraham Mindset, Mind Shift Challenge, you'll find it. And it's basically J. Abraham, one of the great business thinkers of our time. You know, he basically outlines, like I think it's like 50 or 100 different cases where business deals were created without any transfer of money. So he saw one company had a resource, another company needed that resource, to create this new thing. And he, he, he shows you how they were, how they connected and created something new. That's something I think we should really, um, everybody should think about more so, is like, how can I get something rather than I just can't? And it's Robert Kiyosaki talked about it in his book too, you know, how can I afford that rather than I can't afford that? And another mindset I'll share with you is, well, someone who's wealthy, they don't say how much is that gonna cost? They say, how much is it gonna make me? right? Yep. These are all simple little reframes. When you put them into your mindset, when you, when you start thinking about them, things change. Another mindset I'll give you very briefly is, you know, switch from team uh, consumer to team producer. So instead of buying a product on Amazon, sell a product on Amazon. Instead of taking a course, offer a course. Mm -hmm. So the point is like, it's just like literally switching team and yep. And, and like that's possible in at least one area of your life now where you can take control, you can be more proactive in nature and you can create new things, which in time will turn into massive results, uh, be it financially, be it non-financially. So again, a lot of stuff there people can grab and I, I think are really important. Oh, that's great because uh, I mean, what you're saying is how you see the world is how you produce results in it. And, and you're just taking some simple things and flipping it on the other side of how somebody would see it and produce um, phenomenal results. Well, and, and so I'm noticing that you have a very high level of commitment in your life, whether it's growth, whether it's your business, whether it's personal, talk about that because I think that's um, something that is um, not talked about enough. Yeah, that's cool that you picked up on that. I, yeah, I, I do. And I, again, I, maybe I don't think about that as much as I should, uh, but I do. It comes down to the fact that one of the, the values I feel that I, I, I want to exhibit every day and I intend to is drive, having drive, wanting to make things happen. I, and again, I just like to win. Like that's the thing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the expense of other people, by the way, but I like to win. I like to see things work. I like to see the results of those things. And that's the thing. I, I used to hear people talk years ago about and say things like, like money's not a motivator for me anymore. And I'd be like, that's such crap. <laughs> is so full of crap it's not true of course you're motivated by money and jim Rohn, i remember he said it once he's like you know i he said something like you know oh i i take the money but i don't need the money you know this kind of thing he was right. kind of joking and it's the same thing with me it's like 
money is a is a definitely a, a scorekeeper of value is basically what we're talking about so so that's 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 number one when it comes to commitment then having that drive for life that I've just talked about, I, I, I try to bring that into everything I do. I always want to be good at the things that I'm taking on. So for example, with, with health, for example, now I'm not, I'm not in perfect condition or anything. I'm doing very well, but I, I absolutely will be, uh, will be doing better soon because I'm always making optimizations. I'm not perfect by the way at all. You know, I get my days when I don't eat what I should have eaten. I eat some junk food or whatever, and that's that's just the way it is. And I accept that as as part of trying to live relentlessly in every area of your life at once is very difficult. It's it's very difficult. Now it's not impossible, but it's tricky. So so having the drive in all those areas is important, but I also know I'm not perfect. That's just a, a preface. So then when it comes to my knowledge. You know, I'm so driven for, for knowledge because knowledge is power. I don't care what anybody says. And when you can learn how to execute on knowledge, that makes you unstoppable. So I'm always trying to teach myself in a number of different areas. Something I heard somebody say once was you're trying to be like a Renaissance man, they call it, but a Renaissance person is the more PC phrase uh, for, for us all these days. And I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, I don't want to just be knowledgeable about business. I try to read a philosophy. I try to figure out life as much as I possibly can. And that all just comes down to another thing I heard once, which was, you know, suck the marrow out of every day, right? Mm. And just get everything you can from each day. And again, I'm not like, now, not every day do I have that much energy because nobody does. But on most days, if you ask somebody how, what they think of me, they'd probably say, I work hard, which, you know, I don't, I try to work smart, but they'd probably tell you I work hard. I study hard. I'm always thinking, I'm always talking about things I'm interested in. So yeah. And I, and I really feel like if I can share that enthusiasm with others for, for life, you know, and, and maybe give people a vision for what's possible when you really apply yourself. My thing is then you can do, you can do anything pretty much. They're not absolutely anything because for example, if I wanted to become a, a professional soccer player or something at this point, it's not going to happen because physically it's not <laughs> yeah. going to happen. Right. right. Exactly. I'm get a lot better, but I don't think I'd be in the Premier League. So equally, like, you've got to be realistic too. But typically, the things that we want to do, start a business, and lose weight, get, become healthy, better relationships with our family and, and kids, um, all of those things, they're 100% available. They're 100% possible. But you got to understand, like everything, there's a price, and typically the price is you got to commit, and you got to be driven, and you got to every single day use your time. Like they, another, I seem to be quoting everybody today, but it's another, <laughs> this is great though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like uh, everything comes to he who hustles while he waits. Um, mm. I, I was, a, I think it was uh, Abraham Lincoln might have said that. But that's the thing. Like even when I'm just like. And it's and it can be negative too. Like even when I'm relaxing, I find it hard to relax almost because I just there's so much to to learn about life, and it's so exciting. So that's my outlook on life. That's what I try to achieve every day. Well, and and there's a very strong um, undertone of a positive way of looking at these things. You're committed in a positive way. You're not committed to where you, you talk negatively, you know, in the voice in your own mind. It's, it, it's very positive. Is not. Oh God, absolutely. I mean, you've got to, uh, you cannot be negative because even for example, if, if uh, something doesn't work out in business for us, it's on to the next thing. You know, why sit there and wallow and, and you know, oh, why didn't that work or whatever? Like, figure out why it didn't work and then commit to making sure that doesn't happen again. And understand that not everything is going to work perfectly. Understand when challenges come, coming back to what we said earlier on, like, being resourceful is important. Understanding that you are going to fail, and that's fine. But then comes to Conor McGregor's trainer, a fellow Irishman. He, he said, you know, John Cavan said, we win or learn. And that's the thing for us. We always try to look at it the same way. We never lose. And you actually can't lose when you look at life like that. And that's what's kind of cool. It's like I started playing golf last year. I was the worst golfer <laughs> you've ever seen, okay? I literally know. I couldn't even hold a golf stick properly. I, it was hilarious. And my friend, <laughs> he's, a, he's a great golfer. And he said, I'll teach you how to play because I wanted to learn. So cool. He started teaching me and it's a year later and I'm a much better player now. I'm not, I'm not perfect yet, but I'm, I'm a lot better than I was. 
And the point is, he said to me one time, and this is why I love golf so much now, he said, the thing about golf is, golf is a game of misses. And what it becomes is, when you make the mistake, it's how well you can atone for the previous mistake. That's how well you're going to finish out your round. And that's the thing about even professionals in golf. Even professionals make mistakes with a shot, but then it's about what they do next. That's ultimately going to determine whether they win or lose. So again, with all our lives, we're living a game of misses. We're going to miss every single day, but it's what we do afterwards and the resourcefulness that we command that negative thing, uh, that we, how we come at that with resourcefulness, that's what's going to determine the, the rest of your life. And so that's what's important. So this is amazing to me because you just went on for about two straight minutes about failure and you never actually used the word, which I completely love. Uh, I don't, I don't think people, um, realize how to look and define failure in the way that you did. And I wish more people did. Yeah. Well, there's a great book as well called relentless, you know, maybe you read, I don't know if you did, but uh, in that book, you know, he talks about different types of people. You've got closers and cleaners and all this. A cleaner is what we all strive to be. He was, this guy was a sports coach. Originally he coached uh, LeBron and Michael Jordan and all the top guys in the U S and basically he, he outlines in this book, his outlook on life. And one of the rules of being relentless is that you cannot, there's no such thing as failure at all. Like cleaners refuse to even accept the word failure. And that's where I learned that from, you know, um, he talks about a number of examples of, of things that just didn't go right for certain people, but like they grit their teeth and they just committed to never allowing that to happen again. And also even, even if you do something and it doesn't work out, that doesn't mean it's over. Like there's always a way. And that's what he says in the book as well. A cleaner always tries to find a way to, to, to overcome the situation. So put into simple terms in our Amazon business, let's say somebody, they sell a product. It doesn't, it doesn't sell the way they want it to sell. So, well, what are you going to do? Is you going to leave it there? No, right. you look at, well, why is it not selling? Is it getting traffic? Yeah, it's getting traffic. Okay. Well, what's happening next? It's not, no one's, it's not converting. Okay. Your listing is the problem. Go back a step. I'm not getting any traffic. Okay. Your keywords are the problem, or maybe your paid advertising is the problem. That the point is like you, you, there's no, there's no such thing as failure. It is simply about looking at uh, something that's happened and then what tweaks can I make now in the moment to, to make sure I can get out of this. And, and, and okay. Sometimes like yesterday, for example, I, I'm a big soccer fan and the team I support Manchester United not having a good season. And basically they just missed out on the, the Champions League, which is a big thing, right? Okay. And, and essentially the manager came on and just said, like, we didn't deserve to be there. And we just made, it was in our hands and, we, and it was in our control and we didn't perform. Hmm. And, and that's the only time when, okay, that's now over. You did fail in, in, that, in that goal. But you want to know something? The new season is in September. So it's not like, you know, they're not going to get another chance to try to get into the Champions League. So you got to understand that like life continually rolls on. So no matter what you do, uh, even, even bankruptcy, that's the funniest thing. Bankruptcy is the one thing everybody's the most afraid of. <laughs> and actually most people who've been bankrupted in their life. Okay. It was, it was bad for a few months, but then it just started again. And that's the thing. Like in America, the bankruptcy laws are actually really good in mm -hmm. Europe. They're a bit different, but they're getting better. But ultimately we all can start again. It was brought into our constitutions that we have the right to start again if it doesn't work out for us. So yeah, why would we talk about failure when there is none, you know? Exactly. Now, do you find that uh, uh, looking at things as either uh, a win or learning allows you to be resourceful? Definitely, yeah. And it allows me to, to, to really come at things without fear too, you know? And mm. at the end of the day, you know, I think one of the things that makes you most endearing is when you're most honest. And let's just say and it's never, it's never really happened to us actually with marketplace superheroes, but there, there will come a day I'm sure when we put together some kind of a, a program or whatever for our students and, and nobody really wants it. Like, I'm sure that will happen. You know, we'll get it wrong at some point and it's just not popular. And, you know, I'd rather hold my hands up and just say, we're not going to run this, this program because 
Nobody wanted it. You know, now it hasn't happened, touch wood, but it will happen, I'm sure. And I'd rather come out to people and say, you guys just didn't want it, and that's fine. Um, we thought you would, but you didn't. And just being honest with people, I think, is huge because that's what makes you endearing. It's what makes you interesting. Always having this thing of, like, I, I win at everything is nonsense. And just telling people, like, you're not going to always get the win. But then everything we talked about, on from that, that's the real measure of a character. And I learned that from a young age, you know, in other areas. And it's that, that mindset. I forgot about it for a few years when I became a victim. And I was a victim because I listened to everybody else and I, I, I let other people tell me how the world was. And then I started to learn a new way of thinking from the reading I've done, from the, the people I began to spoke to. And what I realized was almost, the, almost everybody out there, the masses that are fed this message, they're fed a defensive message of, of reality. But as you talked about earlier, Brian, you, know, you can choose what way you want to look at the world. And so if you literally choose to look at the world in a positive way where everything's happening for you, well, that's a really powerful way to live your life. And some people might say it's delusional, but it's really not. Like, you know, when you do and you act into and you act as if, because it's acting as if everything is happening for you, your life will be very different. And people will be drawn to you then because you're a positive influence. People constantly say to me, like, you're so positive, you're so positive. And I am positive, not always. Now, sometimes I'm negative, like I, I'm a human, but equally I try to snap out of it quickly because I start coming back to these principles and I start realizing, you know, that it's like Napoleon Hill had that book, Outwitting the Devil. That's like the little devil on your shoulder trying to pull you back to mediocrity. A friend of mine, Brian Stuman, calls it uh, the force of average, right? The force of Ooh. average is trying to force you back, but you got to fight against that and, and refuse to 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 regress back to that you know oh yeah uh i love it uh and i've yet to read that um uh, napoleon hill book somebody mentioned to me last uh last week so this thing keeps showing up in my life so i think i gotta i gotta read it <laughs> <laughs> so, well, he's, a, he's an interesting character all right napoleon. oh yeah so um there's people listening to this thinking to themselves well, Steven's got an online business. He does Amazon. You know, that's not my business. That, that doesn't apply to me. Um, but how, explain to everybody, because I, I know that's not true. I know that this applies to everybody. Let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. Well, I mean, I suppose if you look at it from a meta level, well, I clearly don't just have an Amazon business because, you know, Marketplace Superheroes is a, is a, is a coaching, consulting, mm. for it. It's a service business, a coaching business, multi-million dollar level. So I, we run about literally like five or six companies, right? So that's number one for anybody listening. Like we are involved in a lot of businesses now. And some people might say, oh, well, why don't, why don't you just be involved in Amazon? Well, obviously in order to get the message out, you have to learn other businesses. And that's something as well. We do teach our, our clients, you know, when they're, right, when they're ready, we do teach them other things they can do on the internet and how to do it and all of that. Uh, but typically... Amazon's a great way in. Anyway, to answer your question, you, you, you know, really the principles of, of business, there's one simple one that we follow with our Amazon business and every other business that we own. And it's something you should be looking at uh, listening. Fulfill demand, don't create demand. Simple, simple law of business. Like, And a lot of people, they don't follow that law. They think, I'll, I'll cre I'm going to try create demand for this. But understand something on the internet and in life, you know, things are sold because there are solutions to problems, number one, but also they're sold because people are looking for that solution. Simple example, uh, on Amazon, people are looking for plastic shoe boxes, right? <laughs> when you sell a plastic shoe box, you're solving their problem. The query was plastic shoe box. Equally, when we create a program with Marketplace Superheroes, uh, we have to look at what is it people want to learn right now? What problem are they having? Where do they need more support? Where do they need more help? How can we create a solution to that problem that's profitable to us and profitable to them from a knowledge point of view? Our freight business, we looked at it and we said, our customers have a problem getting stock from China to the US uh, in, a, in a safe, efficient, profitable manner. How can we offer that solution? So you listening today, it doesn't matter what business you're in, ask yourself constantly, Am I creating demand or fulfilling demand? 
then understand traffic, people. The, you cannot create traffic. Uh, you cannot create interest. All you can do is divert traffic or divert interest to what you're doing. The biggest problem with most, say, sales professionals, uh, coaches, etc., is actually that they don't understand this. And they all say the same thing. They promise the same things. They don't try to niche down. They, they do nothing in, in that regard because they're just copying the next person who's offering the same thing. But understand, like, you can only divert traffic, divert interest. So imagine you're offering the same thing as somebody else and there's traffic here being diverted down. Well, clearly then, if you're doing the same thing, if you're advertising in the same place saying the same thing, what are you doing? You're diluting the things that are being diverted, right? So that's why it's important to, to consider how can, I, how can I essentially sell that, but how can I do it in a way where it feels different, it feels new, it feels innovative, it feels like a category that I can own. I can control. And we did that with our freight business. You know, I mean, uh, there's lots of freight forwarders out there who, who, who ship stuff, but we created a new way of doing freight where people pay a membership fee, mm. which people, they'll never pay a membership fee. They do. <laughs> uh, join the network. Then we save them a ton of money because they pay for their shipping ahead of time. Like you pay credit on your cell phone, they pay all shipping ahead of time and then we give them shipping credits. And so, that's the thing. Like we didn't allow the world to tell us what way it was going to be. We created a solution because we knew that our problem was already there and we solved the problem in a new, interesting way. So remember those principles, fulfill demand, don't create demand. You're always diverting interest. You're always diverting traffic, create a new way of doing things, a new offer. Um, and then you, you have something that's a lot more interesting and you can apply that to any business. Yeah, that's great. I, Steven, I, I appreciate that. So, well, I'm grateful for your time today, man. I, this was, this was great. I mean, uh, I learned something, um, you know, as much as I do these for transparently, as much as I do these for other people, I always learn something. So, uh, I'm grateful for you and, uh, and your time today. So before we go, um, let everybody know, um, how to get a hold of you and I'll make sure it's shared wherever this, um, video and audio are shared. No problem. So, uh, the two best ways, Number one, just go to marketplacesuperheroes.com. Uh, we'll, well, I'll give you the link for the show notes as well. Uh, also, when you're spelling heroes, uh, O-E-S at the end. Everyone says O-S, but it's O-E-S mm -hmm. uh, dot com. And then the second thing is I'm on Instagram, Stephen with a P-H, uh, J Summers, S-O-M-E-R-S, Stephen J Summers. That's my handle on there. Uh, that's the, I'm just building that up with other stuff. We have a YouTube channel as well. You can just search Marketplace Superheroes. And um, we have a free Facebook group called Amazon Superheroes. So I actually gave you four. I said I'd give you two. Uh, so they're <laughs> Uh, all free, no charge. Um, but it, look, whatever is most comfortable to you guys listening, uh, best place probably just come back to marketplacesuperheroes.com and there's tons of free coaching and information there for you. You can check out and look, if it's a fit, great. Uh, but many people that are listening today won't be. Uh, but a, a lot of our audience, a lot of our best students actually are existing business owners, service business owners. So you know, if it's for you, great. If it's not, I hope you learned something new today, uh, something maybe uh, you can think about your business in a new way. And I just, uh, thanks for having me on, Brian. I really appreciate your time as well and for putting this on. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. So, um, well, thanks everybody for tuning in to this uh, most recent episode of uh, On Purpose Growth Podcast, and we'll see you next time. And uh, also, if you're if um, you want to get a hold of Stephen, all the information will be shared uh, wherever you're listening to uh, this podcast on. So thanks for coming out. Thanks for listening to the On Purpose Growth Podcast. Let us know what you thought in the comment section. For more from On Purpose Growth, go to onpurposegrowth.com. Subscribe here at BLTV for all of our content, including the daily Learn About Law podcast, Seize Your Business, Make Real Estate Fun, and Logical Logistics podcast brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Thanks for listening.